What do you think why I'm showing you the picture of the current border situation of uh, Africa, Europe, European border? How does this fence relate to music? And how can music support to eliminate the need of borders and fences? So... And I mean not only the physical borders and the physical fences, I mean also the ones in our minds and in people's minds. Not in ours, because I think we wouldn't be here maybe otherwise, but a lot of people have fences and borders in their minds, and music can help us to understand more of each other. So let's give some attention. The common benefits of music from and within Africa I'm going to talk about some economical, political, and social cultural impacts. Music and art from Africa offers a lot to the world and has, has very high values with many positive aspects. I think it's not only from Africa, but for me personally, when I found, I come from the fashion business before, and I used to travel a lot to Cape Town, to South Africa, to shoot campaigns and, 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 and advertising campaigns and stuff like this. And what I found was music and culture and color, and it was inspiring me so much, it made me so happy, it touched my heart, that I, at some point I decided to leave the fashion business, go into the music industry, because I wanted to bring this happiness, it created in me, to bring it to the world. And that's why I'm standing here right now. <laughs> And I think it's of a very high value that we bring joy and happiness to people and to a better life. The energy follows the attention. So I'm putting my energy and my attention, or I'm putting my attention to the positive aspects and to good things. And to me, music is one of it. Music is bringing people together. My bands play a lot worldwide, but it's very touching sometimes when we see the reaction of people. Two years ago, we went to Poland to a very small village. They have never seen an African band. We went to the community hall because they were cooking there for us. The old ladies, they were cooking, and then they asked us to sing a song. The end of the story was that everybody was singing together, clapping, making rhythms with the forks and the knives. They were smiling. They would not go out and say, oh, Africans are, you know, there will not be racism after this kind of incidents. Bringing, it brings people together, and I see it. The fans, they come, they want to take pictures with the musicians, they want to talk, they want to be in touch. We get so many Facebook messages. It brings people together. And it enriches cultural exchange. So we make each other curious, what, what is your culture? How do you do this? Where does it come from? Yeah, we exchange cultures and create more understanding, showcasing cultures and countries, it's the same. Building bridges el eliminates racism, creates tolerance and understanding, it's spreading messages. A lot of artists also have very valuable messages, either to the world or to their own communities. Um, to change traditions which might not be very, very good, like um, the female, how do you call it in English? Um, the genital... Mutilation. Yes, thank you. Um, political messages. Also in West Africa, the griots, they tell the stories about the history. Some people cannot read, they cannot write, but the musicians and the griots go and they tell the history. So, spreading messages. It's triggering our com emotional competences. Music is energy and it creates emotions. You have probably found yourself crying at some songs, smiling, wanting dance, wanting to jump, thinking of a person. It creates emotions. In the end, it brings joy, healing and happiness. Then also another aspect is it generates sustainable income for African musicians, their family, and their communities. My bands tell me this. I just realized recently that they say, you know what, every euro we earn here, 50 cent we might spend here, but 50 cent we're going to send to Africa. 
or we're going to take it back. Our families can live from it. We can send our children to school. The teachers get employed. They can afford their families to feed their families again. So it's a whole kind of circuit. I think it's with any business, but also it contributes you know, to, to, to their income for a better life. Now let me show you a little bit what I do and how we do it. Um, this is a sample from my artists. This first one from South Africa. Manu Gallo is from Ivory Coast. Mamadou Diabate from Burkina Faso. Yuri Dakunya from Angola. Mukumba from Zimbabwe. Yvonne Male from Zambia. Chichiku is from Ghana. Mariama Sierra Leone, Germany. And Deba Demba, Burkina Faso, Mali. Um, the only bands living in Africa is three. Nomfusi, Chichiku, no, Yuri, Mukumba, the rest is based in Europe. <coughs> Last year, I have booked and produced 85 concerts with mostly focus on six of these bands in over 17 countries, most of them European. So I want to show you a little bit what, how do they sound like. This is Mukumba from Zimbabwe. Very successful band, nominated for many awards, won already many awards. A wonderful band, beautiful people. I really enjoy being on tour with them. And they play major festivals like Seagate in front of 20,000 people. Now the sound. Yesterday they were playing in Luxembourg. Fusi from South Africa, she was uh, portraying Miriam Makeba in the latest Na Mandela movie, Long Walk to Freedom. Um, very sweet, powerful. Remix. Hi, my name is Nomfusi and I'm a singer from South Africa. about my background. I grew up in the townships of South Africa, the Eastern Cape. <laughs> my musical influences come from beautiful musicians, Motown music. Okay, the next one is Mamadou Diabate, balafon master from Burkina Faso. He lives in Vienna. Um, interesting, the way he plays the balafon is a language. He is invited now, he's flying actually in three weeks to the Dasmouth College, uh, the university outside of Boston, to preserve this balafon language and to translate it, to record it for three months. And he's an incredible, also individual and artist and very, uh, very powerful. Hi everybody, my name is Mamadou Diabate from Burkina Faso, Balafon Master. <laughs> yes, you see Mamadou Diabate and Percussion Manier, this is my band, I want to come in to your festival. Now, you see two balafons talking together. You never see this before. 
Just a little bit of what, what I'm doing every day. <laughs> um, the first video of Mokumba was shot in Siget Festival in Budapest, Hungary, one of the biggest European music festivals. It was filmed by Arte TV. The second, we've produced it for Nomfusi, but the concert were in Munich, where we produced a concert against racism. This Mamadou was, this one first was shot in Malaysia, Rainforest Festival. And the last part was in Vienna, I think, at the African Festival. So, yeah, just I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> what are the economical, economical impacts? How does, it how does the reality of a touring artist from Africa look like? As you can imagine, it's not an easy task and it's not an easy business. But we still, we go for it. Um, I have put up a case which I think, you know, working with figures and money every day, which kind of is realis realistic to my experience with the current tour of this band from Zimbabwe. It's a six-piece band, six people coming from Zimbabwe. Now, we would say that they need to eat. So we calculated 30 euros a day to buy food. Some days they don't have to buy food because the festivals provide food but some days they cook or they have to buy food to go to the restaurant. So in general, we say we estimate 210 euros a week per person. Then, as this is a minimum which I would like to ensure for my artists. Yeah. Then we have fee per concert per person. It's 200 to 250 euros. That's, for me, a minimum standard fee. If you go out and work, do you work for 200 euros a day? Ask yourself. But musicians sometimes ask, just to pay for 30 euros doesn't matter. No, we can't. They have to make a living out of it. And this is already what I find is a minimum. Then we have agent fees. This is kind of based on a price between four and 5,000 euros for a band where we take between 15 and 20%. Um, means we come to a concert fee of one five and then travel costs. Travel costs mean I have to fly in six people from Zimbabwe. I have to rent a house for two months here in Europe. We have to rent a van. We have to go by train. We have to fly to some of the shows. So all these costs summarized together, if I divide them by, for example, 20 shows, I'm coming to an average between 1,500 to 1,800 euros per show travel and production cost means in general I would have to ask for a band like this to make sure all the costs are covered and everybody of us involved earns the minimum decent fee we have to ask around four and a half thousand euros for a band like this which is in some places a very good uh, let's say it's okay some places don't have it they have less especially if you want to play club shows it's not possible the scenario looks totally different because it depends on how many tickets you sell, how many people come to your shows. If you bring mostly, let's say, a young band who's not that popular, maybe you get 100 people, you cannot come to this amount. Festivals range, let's say, between three, three, two and a half, three thousand to seven, eight upwards. It depends on how popular your band gets, how, how much you market it. But like, from my current uh, what do you say, working scenario with that band from Zimbabwe, 
is more or less, which is also my guideline, you know. In the beginning, if I start to book a tour, I have to know what is the average money I need to earn for this band to make it work for everybody in the end. So no, nobody pays on top or the band goes back also with money in their pockets. So this is the, what's this case with uh, Mokumba this year. We have 18 shows in two months. The turnover is 60,002 euros. We have costs of 36,000 euros. It's kind of crazy, it's 58%. But it's also variating, you know. We have been looking at problems like petrol prices go up. Now this year, uh, the car rental, they have through the diesel um, scandal, with the with the engines they had to put the prices up for the rental cars because they don't get new registration for diesel vans and all these every year there's a new story <laughs> which brings you costs which you don't expect to yeah um it's kind of the same i think we can skip that the summary for me in general is that we need more funding for touring artists from africa if you look at Scandinavian countries, they have amazing, also Canada, they have really amazing uh, funding programs for artists to go on tour. They support them on travel costs, on hotel costs, you can apply for it, and it, it works, you know. I think African countries and African governments must top up their game and support their artists in tour because they are their ambassadors for their cultures, for their countries, for their, yeah. It's, it's important, so and it's an investment because music is not only entertainment. Music is a business, and there's different opportunities, also different possibilities. You know, we we are trying to work on. It's like the sponsoring as a business model, sponsoring for cultural ambassadors, cultural funds from the country of origin, and then we have foreign institutions which help a lot, like the Goethe Institute, Alliance Francaise, the British Council. They do support a lot, yeah. But yet, it's not enough. A lot of times, the funding pots are very uh, disc the way to apply is very complicated and doesn't really match our needs. So, what is the business offering, and where are the opportunities? Hard facts. I've made a, um, a presentation two years ago in Morocco, and I was about to I was to ask to present the German market. So, this is just for the German market. 1.56 billion euros is the turnover of live concerts in 2015 in Germany by 1,324 concert promoters. They say, the studies say that about 3 to 4 percent falls onto world music. So I have estimated that 1.5 percent falls on African music or music from Africa because um, it's very present, it's popular, it's, it's well established. Um, so I've I've calculated that, let's say, 23 million euros are the revenues for live concerts in Germany. It's a number, yeah? It's, there is business there. What do we need to grow the business? More media support, for sure. Often I hear from journalists or radio stations, no, we don't play music from Africa because our people would switch off the radio. It's nonsense. I go to festivals in front of 20,000 people, the people love it, they have never maybe heard African music, they don't expect it, they all dance, they're happy, don't tell me people will switch off the radio. I don't believe it, it's not true. So we are pushing, and there is also journalists who support you know, niche markets like music from Africa. Me, music from Africa is also, you have everything there. You have hip hop, you have house music, you have uh, traditional music, you have soul, you have pop, you have everything. So it's also not that easy to, to, to say it. But in general, uh, for example, I've booked a radio promoter with my artist Nom Fusi. We have done more a commercial soul pop album, yet she was always put in that box of Africa from the radio stations. Some of them played it, by and by and so on, but often you, it's automatically, zack, you get into the box, which I fight for, that they don't do. Promotion, um, good PR agencies, marketing, business models, how we can we create more business joint ventures with brands, then collecting society, publishing, physical, digital sales, sync deals, movie, TV. 
That's a big topic. Um, a lot of African countries don't have proper running collecting societies. Like everybody's always mad about the German GEMA. I personally like them because they really collect money and funds for the authors, the composers, and the artists. And it's really an important Im income, especially now as physical CD sales go down. Um, we need, when the music is played, they have to pay a compensation of royalties and the artists get it paid out. And I can see it because I get a lot of the statements. So I I it's a valuable income and a continually running income for the artist. And there's a lot of people working on this to establish it more. Uh, South Africa is already quite good with it, with the Samro, but Kenya, I think, is starting to work on it. Some of the Eastern African countries are starting, because I know a lot of people who are in the music industry and they're starting to establish this, because it's a business and it brings money and it goes back to the artist. Then, of course, phys physical and digital sales, CD sales. We still sell, sell a lot of CDs on concerts, and it might be small, but it adds up. In the shops, depends. Digital, most of the people are streaming. I think the music industry killed themselves, but, well, well, what can we do, you know? Maybe there is a way, as Africa gets more and more development of data and uh, cell phones that People have to, yeah, just send a text message and then they can have access to music for a while and still pay for it. Because in the end of the day, to produce a song costs money. You have to go in the studio, you have to pay a sound engineer, you have to pay the musicians. It costs money, yeah. And even now today, most of the musicians, they have their laptops and their programs, but even they have to buy a, a laptop. It costs money. So it also, music cannot only be for free all the time. It must be a business part. Then sync deals means where you give music to movies, to th TV, to documentaries. It's also quite a good uh, part of, of the music business. Merchandise. I mean, just we lady was talking about design. There is great things you can do, you know. The bands have really funky logos, funky websites, you can do great t-shirts, caps, whatever you want to do, you know, it's, it's, it's an extra income. Merchandise is a big, big thing. Then med med music education programs, exchange and collaboration. Um, Mamadou Diabate, the Balafon player, he does a lot of workshops in schools with children, and it's really amazing to see that. It's first of all really beautiful, and secondly, it's also an extra income possibilities for artists. He goes to schools, he presents the balafon. Sometimes children have never seen this kind of instrument, and they are so happy, then he tells his story where he comes from. They're interested in him as a person, they're interested of the music, of the instrument, the material, all these things, and it's, yeah, we go to German schools, or he lives in Austria, so in Austria, they charge seven euro per pupil, so sometimes it's a ses two sessions a day with a hundred uh, children each. It's a good income for the artist, and, you know, it, it contributes of bringing people together, working against racism, making people aware of other cultures and it's really, it works very nice. We want to extend that and, and offer these programs to uh, German, all of the schools in Germany. Let's see you know, what kind of feedback we get. But uh, recently, last year I went to Uganda. There is some really great talented musicians who build their own kind of, yeah, like a West East African harp, like a kora thing, um, and then Biera, and all these instruments, you know, they are beautiful to showcase in schools with children, it's great. And if you bring a band on tour, and they don't have yet such a hype, it's a great additional competent, um, additional, what do you say, for them to, 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 to make the, the tour cost effective and to earn money, to bring this together. And of course, the touring opportunities, I think also within Africa, you know, um, that they build more clubs where artists can play, not only 
some countries they play a lot where artists are just booked for hotels and this kind of things but here in Germany you have clubs in every city I mean in Berlin you have probably about I don't know how many live live music venues are sometimes missing in South Africa for example it's hard to really put a whole tour where you say you play in Johannesburg in Durban in Cape Town in Port Elizabeth and and maybe name another couple of smaller uh, cities but to establish like really a touring circuit. There is, um, I'm gonna say it later, uh, a Southern African first festival circuit where different Southern African countries have joined together to organize festivals in the same time frame in May and then the artist plays all these festivals. So you can bring an artist also, let's say a Moroccan band, you can bring them because they play automatically six festivals in a row and you don't have to fly them in for one show from Morocco to South Africa. So the costs are shared between the festivals and you create touring opportunities. Then the political and social cultural impacts. To me personally, something which now reflects back to the first picture which I showed you. I um, think you are all aware of the situation in some of the Western African countries and there's artists who are very, very motivated and very uh, encouraged to fight for a better life and for a better world and for peace. And um, does it work? left me. Sorry, <laughs> technical problems. I was about to show you a movie. I don't know, have you heard about the uh, Mali Blues? Any one of you know that? Any one of you know Fatoumata Djevara? Yeah. It's a singer, a young female singer from Mali. And she uh, was starring in two I don't know, my laptop is stuck. Um, in two movies, and one about is when the Islam, Islamic uh, extremists went into Mali and went into Timbuktu. They were starting to um, forbid music because music, as I told you before, spreads messages, the history, um, and they don't want this. They don't want people to, first of all, to be happy, to joy, to have uh, pleasure, and to not spread this history and these messages. And they made movies over it, documentaries. Now it's starting to load. <laughs> It was also shown on, on Arte and it went through the, it helps a lot to promote this artist. She now plays in big concerts hall like the Philharmonie in Hamburg. And um, I think she played also recently here in Berlin. It's really, really interesting to see that they stand up and they fight against the oppression of these movements. And they speak out and show also to the world what is happening in, in their countries. Nous, les mus artistes, nous sommes des gens malades, nous sommes des psychopathes. C'est des gens qui ont besoin de la musique. C'est comme un hôpital, la musique. Passe Koukouyate, Grammy nominated artist, also from Mali. Il 
fallait que je m'enfuie du nord, du désert. À ce moment-là, les djihadistes étaient là et ils me poursuivaient parce que j'étais musicien. Alors, euh, j'ai quitté. Politiquement, on n'a rien compris. Mais musicalement, je pense qu'on a compris quelque chose. So what I mean is that sometimes here we don't get every information what is happening in these countries. And music and musicians, they help us to understand more what is happening locally and also for their own people to understand what is happening locally. And let's, if we take Mali, um, it's a very poor country. Education is still low. Reading and writing is not maybe that common. So they're also easy victims for these extreme ideas of the Islamists and these crazy people. So music and musicians help them to also tell them, no, don't follow them, don't do this, it's not good. They spread messages, we need them, it's really important, they're ambassadors for peace. And then they carry that message out to the world. Miriam Makeba talked in front of the United Nations this time when apartheid was occurring in South Africa. And it was one of the reasons why then the United Nations put a ban on South Africa. So music really is, has political impacts to my opinion and should be. And we should encourage them to do more because it's important that and people listen, listen to music. They They follow. This is a little, um, a little overview of, I told you about Mamadou from Diabate. He, when he was small, he was not allowed to go to school because his parents could not afford school fees. So he was so upset, he said, when I'm old, when I'm grown up, I'm gonna build a school. And that's what he did. So he provides five to, uh, free education to 500 children in Burkina Faso, a primary school. Together with the Lions Club in Graz, they founded and built that school. So also where we use music to create a better world. If it shows. <laughs> Free, free education for 450 children in six classes. Well, this is Mamadou, moi, it's in ça. German and French, I'm going to stop it. Moi, Just wanted to give you a little moi, idea. Trends, so now what is happening in the music scene? It's interesting because Afrobeats, not to compare with Afrobeat, which is the origin from Fela Kuti, which our friend Arnold showed us yesterday, but Afrobeats with an S is now the new development of Electronic music now mostly coming from Nigeria and it's becoming quite big and popular. Wizkid, Davido, Yemi Alat, multi-million followers on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. Um, they fly private chats. It's and it's coming here also more and more into the club scene. House music, Kwaito from South Africa, Black Coffee, one of the 
growing one of the biggest DJs in the market. So it's a lot of things happening. The scene is hot on the beats out of Africa. Beyonce is using it. It's because it's good. Yeah, I understand. I fully agree. But it's it's their trend is there. Universal Music South Africa just opened an office here in Berlin to um, release and promote more urban house music from South Africa, for example. So I, I think the trends are there. The same like in the fashion industry. We can feel it. And it's it's good. I think I like it. <laughs> um, we can also see that there's a lot of conferences showing up. Uh, we have like international conferences and festivals. Medem is one of the biggest music conferences worldwide. And this year their focus was Africa, um, which normally they are pop, a pop conference, but they opened up to Africa and put their focus on even for the future. So they see that outside and within Africa there is a huge market. So it's, it's, it's growing and as I say, the energy will follow the attention. So it's good to put the attention on it. Then Vomex is a world music expo, the biggest world music expo. It always moves. This year it's going to be in Gran Canaria. They also have a lot of African music. Then Visa for Music is a new market since three, four years in Rabat in Morocco every year, showcasing only African and um, Eastern, uh, how do you say? I don't know, African music. Then Access Nairobi, Access is also a new conference launched by the musicinafrica.net. It's an uh, initiative from the Siemens Foundation with the Goethe Institute where they build a website and it's just, you can find any kind of information about music from Africa, festivals, artists, you can register there as an artist and now they're starting to also organize conferences. Then another one is, for example, in Capo Verde. So th there's many of them. I could not name all of them. Um, that is a m video from the recent medium. I don't know if we really need to see that. I mean, it's where people say, OK, the next big thing, next big superstar will come out of Africa. There is major opportunities. It's a big continent. So I just wanted to show you that the music scene and the industry is putting a focus on it and it's a topic and it becomes we don't talk about Chinese music no they talk about music from Africa yeah so <laughs> <laughs> definitely a trend I don't know if you want to see it but yes, yes? okay because I don't want to eat too much time <laughs> music is looking for what's next need to load a little bit and this year they had I think Davido there as a also ambassador Yemi Alad was there um, a lot of represents of major universal Ivory Coast South Africa major labels so everybody's kind of waking up it's waking up so we can see we can clearly see a movement and a tr trend I think Back again, and maybe easier. Music is looking for what's next. Ah, there's Wi Fi here. <laughs> Maybe it's too hot. Then it gets slow. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I think we, as we don't know when it's loading, then we go further. Then I found another video, which was probably also not going to load, that recently, um, I mean, we can agree or not agree on the politics of certain countries or politicians, but I always look at the positive movements and uh, sides. And this is the French president, Emmanuel Macron, was recently in Lagos, in Nigeria, and he visited the shrine. I don't know if you know the shrine. The shrine is the famous club which Fela Kuti, the legend of 
Afrobeat in Nigeria was opening and it's still running today. And he visited there. There was a concert by his uh, by Femi Kuti, and it was also beautiful to see because France is gonna put a a cultural highlight um, country exchange on Nigeria and France for 2020. That means that Africa also music festivals will be urged to invite bands from Nigeria, for example, for next year to perform in France and a lot of exchange will happen. So it's always, I always like this kind of, uh, these movements. I also, I think with Angola as well. Yeah, so it's, Things are happening. Um, so then also what does the scene look like in Africa? As I said already, there's a lot of conferences but where there's a lot of people coming. But we have also, I could not really, uh, there's a long list but there's a lot of festivals, beautiful music festivals happening in Africa which are growing bigger and bigger and attracts people, local people, international people. It's and it's I think it's isn't it wonderful if you think, oh I'm gonna fly to Zanzibar and have dance all night under the stars in the warm sand. I mean I think it's great to good music. So it's it's more and more coming and I'd like to always promote it and show people what is there they might not know yeah, that these things are happening or you have really sophisticated jazz festivals in Cape Town where they also bring international stars but also really great jazz musicians from Africa. It's, it's really enriching, it's beautiful. Then as I told you about IGODA before, it's the festival circuit of Southern African countries. The budget in 2017 they had was US $3.7 million dollars it's also not peanuts, it's something. Um, and the economic impact for the regions mean people are coming to the festivals, they have to they go to the restaurants, they spend money, they buy products, they buy a t-shirt, they book a hotel, a lodge, $15.2 million. So it brings also money to the regions. Festival attendance, 50,000 people were visiting these festivals with 254 performers. 35% of them are women. Employment also creates jobs. 2,500 people use employment 40%, females 40%. And it was two 42 artists or bands touring in 2016 and 17 from 14 African countries that were represented. So there's a movement also within Africa. There is opportunities and there is growth. Challenges, well, finances. As I said before, to bring a band from Africa is very expensive, cost-effective. To make it cost-effective, um, it's not that easy. A lot of things have to be in place up front. Um, I get contacted by a lot of musicians all the time, every day, but I cannot bring them because a lot of things are not in order. Yet from there, first of all, how they, they, they are structured, but then also you might find even three concerts, but three concerts are not enough uh, to pay for maybe seven flight tickets from Kenya or from South Africa. It's, it's not working. You know That's why I said sometimes if we have more funding, it would be easier. They could even come for three concerts. But the way I work, I have to, when I fly in a band from that far, I have to find them at least 10 to 15 or 20 shows and that's a, a challenge and it you have to make sure that the band yeah you have to build it uh, visa issues my favorite topic <laughs> i um have to say that i'm quite lucky that by now i have uh, got working permit status for my band from zimbabwe why because last year i came into the situation that we realized oh we have booked too many concerts for too long time and we are running out of 90 days of Schengen visa because you have 90 days, you have to leave 90 days, you can come back 90 days. The problem is that what they don't tell you, <laughs> um, when you tour a lot and you get, first you get the visi visitor visa for Schengen. The second part is the visitor visa with kind of working allowance. And then it's only 90 days within a year 
the embassy told me. I mean, anyway, people also don't know what, they, what their visa regulations are really. I've talked to the foreign affairs here in Germany. They had no idea about their own Schengen visa regulations. Anyway, I managed to find a really helpful lady in Munich at the foreign affairs office, and I told her, look, this is my business. I'm a German citizen. I really need your help. I need this band here because it's, it's, I lose money otherwise, and the band also lose money. No, 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 we don't want that. Send me all the papers. I'm going to make it for you. So now I know normally the system, how it works, and you need a local authority here, like the, the, the local German, uh, German foreign affairs, Ausländer Behörde in Munich, which have to agree that these are uh, special workers who need um, yeah, working, working D visa, visum D. But it's always a challenge because, for example, Mukumba is on tour a lot. We have to really plan the times when to apply for a visa because they have to give away their passports. That means for this one, with Germany, it's actually quite okay. And I always email the embassy, embassy up front. I always find it helps, you know, that an email or a fax comes out of Germany, so they see, okay, it's serious, and I say, okay, my band is gonna come in for visa applications, here's all the papers already from my side, they're gonna bring everything, but please support us, and, 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 and we need the visas within three days, because in four days they have to fly out, and sometimes, yeah, for Europe, let's say, or Germany, I have good experience, because I involve myself. But I know also a lot of agents or managers, they don't do this, they just trust the process, and then later they are sorry, because it takes very long time, the passports are not returned, the f visas might get refused, and it's really, it, it causes financial damage. At the moment, we are fighting a lot with the UK authorities. Um, it's in crazy, one visa costs 300, like, not a visitor visa, because mostly we have to do working, kind of a working, visitor working visa, which costs 300 euros per person. Then they take your passport, and it's gone, and it's like Fort Knox. And you don't know where your passport is, you don't know who is working on it, and you don't know when it comes back. When you book the fast track application, it's 600 euros. Now imagine 600 euros for a six piece band. It's 3,600 euros just for UK visas. Yeah, it's in insane, and I had cases just now on today, yesterday, before I came, there was a big discussion on Facebook, a, a band from Ghana stuck in Denmark were applying for fast track visa, which is supposed to get the vi passports back within five working days. After 28 days, they had not their passport backs. And the management wrote to me because they know I'm very ambitious about visa and I'm very, you know, fighter about this. They said, what should we do? I said, find the email address of the ambassador and email them directly and tell them you need the passports and you need to know what is happening. And it's, I do it now that I email always the ambassadors or the high commissioners up front. I don't care. I find their names. Their email addresses are always structured the, first, the, the, the same way, like mostly first name, dot, last name, at government, na, 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 na. Then if you don't get a failure email back, you know it went through. <laughs> And I don't care, really, I don't care. I, I Also, when, when the people working in the embassies don't operate to what we need, I just CC the ambassador. And I tell you, every time it works so very fast after this. Yeah, it's, it's uh, maybe I'm lucky, but I think also this, this guys from Ghana now got their visa. Then I emailed the, the embassy in Warsaw because we were last year in the same position. They denied a visa for one of my musicians saying that, they presume that he wants to stay in UK to study, so I wrote the ambassador why they have to justify their, um, that I want a justification of this message. How do they come to this knowledge? Because afterwards we have concerts booked in Belgium, in Austria, in Germany. How can they put up something like this and damage my business, the business of my artist and our reputation? Half an hour later, I got the answer, your artist can come back and collect his passport with the visa. Yeah. yeah. So, but you know, you have to, yeah, but it's tiring, you know. Nobody pays me for this extra. Nobody, also a concert doesn't pay for this, we, but we have to do it. So we at currently we are kind of, I'm urging these big music conferences, I'm invited to Vomex as a visa mentor to give tips, and I said to them, no, you as the one of the biggest music 
conference, I want you to do lobby work and invite government officials from the UK and sit, let's sit together on the table and discuss about these topics. What do we need? I mean, Yusun Durs Band recently have to apply for a UK visa. His manager writes to me, says, Stephanie, you know what? I have to type in this 15 times. And then after the fifth time, I give my credit card details. My credit card get get closed because they think it's a fraud. So I have to start all over again. There's no group applications. There is no simplifying system. It's really, and then of course the voices get loud where they say, okay, it's the Brexit thing. It's racism. They want to uh, keep Africa out of Europe. This is their way. I personally don't really think that it's much of this case. I think they are totally understaffed and idiots. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> 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 or uh, really understaffed and they make random decisions, yeah, really random decisions. And I told them we are running businesses here and how can you judge over my business and make a decision which damage us? I don't agree with this. But it takes my time, my energy, and I would rather find more shows for my artists than fighting with visa applications. So it's one of our biggest challenges. And we do everything according to the Schengen and UK and US rules, but we need the system to support us. Yeah. It's so this is again from that where I thought why I wanted to come here when I found this uh, website. Actually, I have a um, Dutch agent friend of mine, she showed it to me. And I said, yeah, that's exactly what we do every day. And where we booking concerts, where we promoting concerts, where we're bringing bands on tour. It's cultural diplomacy. That's what we do every day. It's our daily business, and we would like to have more support and more awareness of it, and not only also see the people understand music is not only entertainment. It's a value, a high value, and a valuable business f also for Africa. And I think that's my personal passion, but Music from Africa is so beautiful, it's a treasure. You have a treasure, <laughs> and people love it. I can tell you because I'm there every day with my bands, and I can see the people happy, smiling, dancing. Yeah. So, and it brings people to Gaba. And these days, especially, also, it's a beautiful, powerful way to create a more peaceful and better future for all of us. It's more important than ever again in these days also of right-wing governments and all this propaganda that we put our focus back on these positive messages. Um, yeah, so we don't only make music, we make much more. Thank you. <laughs> Did I do it so later? Sorry? Um, I think one one of the things I said is like we need to sit down with the people of visa process. Maybe we can find a new system where we can say, okay, because of for example, Mukumba's passports, all on their passports it's written musician, you know, so we can have a system where uh, we know, okay, these are trusted bands which are on tour, they are known, these are trusted agencies, these are trusted promoters, so we create a network where we say, okay, you can help us to, to, to simplify visa processes, to make it more easy, things like this. Then cultural funding, yeah, where we have more access to funds, to, to pots where we can apply, where bands can get travel funding, where our work as well, I mean, um, I sit there, I work a whole year for a tour like this, you know, and the money I make, honestly, is not, is not play, displaying in the amount of hours and work and energy and effort I do. I don't do it for the money, but in the end of the day, you know, it's also something which brings back a value. So I funding is very essential, and especially also that we get funding out of the African countries. As I say, Scandinavia, even Germany, we have the Goethe Institute. They bring, they take a lot of you know, German artists to other countries to show. 
I don't know if there's an initiative in Nigeria where you say we have a cultural pot of I don't know, 1.5 million dollars where we fund our artists to go and play in US, to go and play in Europe, but you need maybe 10 shows to be proven, then we're gonna fund you the, 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 the travel tickets, things like this, yeah. Practice, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you party, or was it so tiring? <laughs> yeah, you need to how to deal how to you need to how to know how to deal with artists. <laughs> sure. Well, the thing is, as I showed you these um, conferences, which are creating more and more within Africa, you know, that there, <laughs> that there is, um, they have also a lot of panels, they have workshops. Last year I was invited to Uganda, a friend of mine runs uh, a festival there and a music conference, Doa Doa, so I was also hosting a music man management workshop. Means that also, you know, we go, not us, also their own people who have a lot of experience, you know, and educate and train the new generation of musicians and tell them what, what does it actually need that you can even think about putting your foot towards a touring or an international or even a national successful career because it needs a lot of things in place, you know. You need good material, you need a website, you need social media, you need videos, you need good pictures, you need a whole... You need a product, and you have to have all of the aspects of the product in, in your hands. So it's also a first step to say, okay, within you know, communities or, or countries, we, we can create more and more education programs about music, about the music business, about the industry, not only how to sing, no, but what, how to run the business. Yeah, to sing is the one side, to make a song is the second side, then to create a product out of it, and then to sell the product. So it's like, it's a business, as I say. Yeah. So it also helps to educate the people to grow this product and then know how to create a business out of it. Then the step could be out of, into the international market, yeah. I have to say that I'm so busy most of the time with the concert tours and find the shows and produce the shows and make the contracts and I've not really, so I don't have the nerves to find it because I find the process is much too complicated and much too, and I then I say, okay, I'd rather, you know, earn less money but I don't have the headache but I would like to actually get more and more into this direction or have more knowledge and even there is from the European Union now Creative Europe, you know, a part where, and these are the people, you know, where we're starting to have, where we're starting to talk, like how can you support us and what do we n really need from you? Because often, you know, the EU, the European Union or the governments, they make these programs and they don't match our needs. It's not what we need uh, down out there in the street. They just think of, you know, there was this pot turn in, in Germany from the Cultural Foundation. They had mul a lot of million of euros to promote Africa within, uh, within Germany. For me, I've not seen any of the, uh, there was one, a friend of mine who had a festival, made a festival out of the f uh, money in Cologne. The rest of the, of the programs for me was not 
promoting really Africa in the big scale here in Germany. You know, it's it's a waste of money sometimes, and it doesn't match the needs. Uh, it doesn't match the the market. Like Switzerland, they have an organization where they fund clubs, venues, and and festivals when they book African artists especially like a club, you know, when they make a minus, let's say they pay you a fee of 3,000 euros, the hotel, like the whole production costs you 5,000, but they don't sell enough tickets for 5,000, they maybe sell for two and a half. So they make a minus of two and a half, they cover that money because they want to make sure that they keep on booking bands from Africa, yeah, things like this. Yes, it's a great product. Specifically, yeah, yeah, and also, also with companies, you know, like uh, I think you know, you can create good uh, joint ventures together with musicians and 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 products. Which you want to launch a South African product here on the German market, yeah. Why don't you use music as well as your language, as your ambassador? I mean, it goes together very well. A lifestyle, feeling, people want to, you know, relate to these feelings. I mean, it's it works as well. Or ca tourism. Yes, of course. Well, you know, just when I founded the name of the company, then I really loved the name Delicious. And but first I was working with a friend of mine from Cape Town. His studio was called Vibration Studio. Um, I like it, but you know, everywhere I go, the people say, oh, nice name. So I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> I don't that it doesn't have to be African, you know, in the, in the first run because I f I like more the surprise that then, you know, they they expect something uh -huh, and then you're like, "Oh, this is particular. This is different." So, I prefer this. It's doesn't have to be, you know, Ub Ubuntu bookings or something like this. It doesn't have to be so obvious. <laughs> yeah, but the delicious tunes, trust me, it works very well. <laughs> So I think then the branding must be on the bands itself, you know, that they brand themselves for. Maybe, you know, it's just something comes to my mind. Of music, you know, is such a normal, um, how do you say, part of, of the African culture. In every country, you know, like you go wherever you want to go, you start to play the music, and people start up to, you know, jump up and dance, and the children and the grandmothers go in Germany somewhere and play music. Do you see a grandmother jumping up and dance? You know, and as I said before, music also has a lot of carries the stories, the history, you know, the messages. It's like sometimes the books of, of, of your knowledge as well. So it's much more normal. And maybe it, that's why 
there's not this kind of awareness yet that it can be also something different or something even more because it's so normal it's anyway it's there it's part of us it's part of it's in our blood you know it's just there but to really create the awareness of hey it can be even more it can be a business it can bring potential it can create i don't know opportunities businesses Maybe that's what we have to do more, you know, to create the awareness for it. It's just coming to my mind right now. I mean, yesterday I met after this conference, I went to meet a friend, and we ended up in front of the Congolese embassy, which was not planned, nothing, but there was music coming out of there. And I said to my friend Mark, I said, hey, let's go in there because it sounds good. And we went in, and they were like, yeah, come in, and we are celebrating Liberation Day, and... I mean, it was great, you know. <laughs> then they, they were dancing. I don't know, go to a German embassy somewhere in, in, the, in the world. Do you think they would behave like this? I don't think so, but it was great. 